Won't you come and say if you know? Morning, and today to we are going up to the end of the Lancaster Canal, which is literally only a couple of miles from where we are now. And then um, I'm hoping to go out for a walk this afternoon up to some crags. And the idea was to go for a camp out. Um, but the weather is very changeable and there's rain forecast for the rest of the week. So we're taking the opportunity today to make the best of an overcast but non-rainy day. See what's at the end of the canal. I don't think there's too much at the end here. I know the motorway comes right up to the end so we won't be staying there. Um, and then we're going to come back to Carnforth for some more time because it's just the best stopping off point for getting out to the lakes. Um, and there's lots more places we want to go and see yet. So for today we're just going slowly up, get some uh, engine into uh, power into our batteries because there's been no sun for days and we're really low and I don't like sitting there and just running the battery for the sake uh, running the engine for the sake of filling the battery up so we're going to have a cruise and hope to fill it up that way so we shall see what's at the end of this canal morning <laughs> There's lots of floating islands on this canal. We've just passed one. You have to sort of try to knock them out of the way. Otherwise you pick them up on your bow and push them forward with you, which isn't great for, well, it just makes the boat heavier. Oh, hello. Hello. Another reason we're going back to Carnforth in a couple of days is that I've been using Henry's phone for the last, um, well on and off for the last video or two and I've noticed that it's much better quality. I've got an old Huawei that's five years old now and it was good when I bought it but the uh, video quality and the sound quality could be better. Things have improved loads and it was time to move on up so I've ordered a new phone that's going to arrive at the post office in Carnforth on Tuesday so I'm looking forward to being able to improve the quality of the videos so that's something to look forward to those craggy hills over there are where we're hoping to be walking this afternoon once we found somewhere to moor up we're going to have to cycle to get to them only a couple of miles though. Well, we found somewhere to moor up where we can access the road into the hills, but there's such a huge gap. We've just about got a long enough gangplank, but it's a bit of a balancing act to not end up in the drink. Never mind, we can get our bikes off. And the very end of the canal is just up there, just another mile or so. We should see that probably tomorrow.
this is the bridle way knot. <laughs> I suppose you could get a horse along here if a horse didn't mind treading through all the undergrowth. But even as a path, I'm having to bushwhack with my trekking poles. Nice though, smells lovely. There's lots of lovely walls around here. We just have to come through that farm where a whole gaggle of luckily caged up collie dogs are barking fiercely at us, so they obviously work as a deterrent. This is quite a long walk to the start of our walk. This is a nice style. Proper ladder up and down. Well, we finally reached the road that takes us round to our start point. Just on there a bit further. It's taken us a couple of hours really to get across all that farmland. And it's quarter to three now, so not quite sure how much of this we'll be able to do. And that's it, we found the start of the walk. <laughs> Although we feel like we've been walking for ages. Look at those. Beautiful. This is a picnic area and a quarry where it starts. This is nice. They seem to be very good in Lancashire at their walks and their paths. There's like thousands of really lovely walks here. Now this is a walk where as you go along you have to keep remembering to look behind because that's where all the view is. And then finally, we found our way to the trig point on Hutton Roof Crag. Oh my gosh, it's lovely. Whoop. see 360 degrees very misty over there up here it's a triple SI a site of scientific interest special scientific interest for wildlife I've got to show you this. It's a little stile with a gate in the middle. <laughs> it's so cute. I'm not sure why there's a gate in the middle. Over there. Let me go up these steps. Morecambe Bay, if you can hear me over the wind. That's my path down there. Well, it's time to stop for tea in our little dell. Hello, Henry. Hello. <laughs> We've got some... Tea. Yeah, and we didn't bring any extra water with us. There's just a, enough for a bare cup of tea each. I was hoping to find a stream, but we haven't come across one, so that'll teach me. Need to bring more water. And we've got a big slab of freshly made 
apricot and raspberry shortbread cake. Well, I have because it's <laughs> not really good for you, is it? Make you ill. <laughs> Never. Blooming dogs are off again. This horse thinks it's a nun. You're very sweet. <laughs> but you're not a nun. Delicious. We're leaving early this morning to get up to the end of the canal before the rain comes in. We're just going through a swarm of swifts who are buzzing around, catching bugs. It's great to hear them. Anyway, as you can see, it's rather gloomy out here. And the end of the canal is literally half a mile ahead. And we'll get there, have a little look. I think there's only a marina and a motorway there. But you know, you've got to see the end of a canal. And then we'll turn around and we'll come back down and find somewhere nice to moor for the day. And that's it. It's the end of the line, as Roy Orbison said. We're just popping our nose in here to turn around. <clears throat> I don't know how you can sleep so close to the motorway. Up there is where the old canal would go, so we'll go and have a look at that after breakfast. Okay, we're going to go off and investigate the canal. Very loud here. <laughs> so, Kendall is 14 miles straight ahead of us, and apparently you can walk all the way to Kendall on the old canal, which we're not going to do but we're going to go and see what it looks like. So there's the end of the canal. And somewhere around here, we should be able to find the other side of it. We need to cross over here. <laughs> I'm not sure how they're going to get the canal through, or well, I suppose it will go under this bridge. My God, it's loud. And here it is, the old abandoned lock. Another one up there pouring water down. Oh, let's go and take a walk. Kendall, 14 miles. Well, although we won't be going there today, we are going to go there on Wednesday because apparently that's market day and it's due to be raining anyway, what's new? So we're going to take a bus into Kendall. So the lock gates have been removed from that end of the lock and the water is coming over here. Strangely, this little bridge across the lock doesn't appear to be old, quite the opposite. So maybe this is part of the, the restoration. The lock itself has been fenced off. Now, I don't know what the state of the restoration is, but how fantastic if you could take your boat right up to Kendall, which I'm told is a very nice place where well, we shall see later in the week. Llamas galloping over there. Dogs doing tricks over there. We've also just spotted an ostrich. 
a very bed- bedraggled looking ostrich. <laughs> he doesn't look happy. He looks like a sculpture. Is he real? Or an emu? He's so still, he looks like a sculpture, but unless somebody has modelled a bedraggled sculpture, it is real. They've got rather excellent horns, these sheep. It looks to me like that farm over there is one of those um, farms that has lots of different breeds and because there's quite a few kids over there at the moment, so it's probably a visiting farm. They're very pretty. Their hair is sort of curly as well. Well, that's lock number five in quick succession. And I guess this is where all the money goes in the restoration because a, a canal that has no locks suddenly has five. I don't know how many more there are up there. It becomes an expensive canal to maintain. And here we have the old to Whitfield lock gates of which okay yeah so there were eight locks over half a mile in use from 1819 to 1942 and this is something that gets all the old weed out and that looks like it's still in use would you say this was still in use Henry? It looks like it, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's got loads of fresh weeds in there. Oh yeah, looks like it's just been working actually. Ah, well we've just met a local who's given us lots of information. So, apparently this bit of the canal stops there where that bridge is because the motorway cuts across it there and in fact the motorway crosses the what well, cuts the canal five times before Kendall and he said when they come to redo this bit they're going to have to move top block number eight down there up to the other side of the motorway and then dig this canal under the motorway but he says that there isn't really much work going on here there's not much political will and um, all they do is cut the vegetation back once a year which is what that machine down there is for so it doesn't look like we'll be going up to Kendall on the canal anytime soon but he's given us some good tips for days out so apparently the thing to do especially on a wet day is to get the 555 bus to Keswick and that goes all through the lakes so that's going to be a plan, especially as all the bus fares are two pounds for a single journey at the moment. So what a cheap day out. So that's the plan. But he also said that because this bit of canal is in water, as it's not further up, it's really good for the wildlife. They've seen otters and a bird called the something or other warbler. <laughs> I couldn't retain that information, but an unusual warbler. So it's all undisturbed, really. Oh, home again. Time to move away from this noisy motorway. I'm back down the canal again. Thanks for watching. Have a good week all. See you on the next video. Bye for now. Show me what you have to show.